as we started this morning with the introduction um, by Anders Ingves about the importance of prevention and preventive measures, I think we all agree, we're all here because we find this important and it is the most important issue for us and I'm sure it will always be. However, I think at least with, with my years in the industry, I've started to realize that one size does not fit all. I think we will have to start and find different preventive measures for different kinds of player populations. We have the mainstream, non-problematic, um, presently non-problematic person who we would like to enjoy their gambling, so we need to, and for them, the, the most commonly used voluntary tools might be enough. Then we have at-risk players, and those we need to identify and possibly um, find better measures for and tailor-made measures for today than we do today. And also, uh, we do have no doubt people who are problematic gamblers who might come to us with a problem gambling behavior already or develop it meanwhile. And we need to identify these and help them to stop gambling. One of our newer projects, uh, in fact, it's so brand new, I can't give you a lot of details at this point in time. Um, had we done this a week later, I would have been. The thing is, we have now started, we have built a big data analysis team. We will basically collect all data and we have data, online data from, from all our customers since 2004 over many markets, many brands. Um, and we will actually look at their journey in order to hopefully improve our predictive tools or our present behavior tracking tools who are at this point in time, I would say, reactive and not proactive. And I would imagine, this is a hypothesis, uh, that we might even need to look at gender specifics and cultural sensitivity. Because I see, for example, we are currently using tools from uh, sustainable interaction like GAM tests, but also an online self-help tool. And even just in the uptake and in the use in the different markets, in the Nordics, for one brand, there are differences. And we can't quite explain them. And that, that would be, um, to me at least, uh, interesting to know as well why and how. And how can we improve things? Because they have exactly the same placement on site. So it can't be, it can't be those reasons. Um, further. Interventions on various levels. We have, through new technology and through, to, through due to the fact that live chat <laughs> is now about 65% of all our customer communication, um, we are reaching our customers and they are communicating with us on a much more personalized way than through email, which go back and forth. And they tend to be more straightforward. Um, and it's easier for us to follow up on signals in their communication. So we have invested a lot and given a lot of emphasis on communication skills and <laughs> soft skills in order to pick up on signs of problematic gambling. And as was pointed out by uh, Per Carlberg, we have found the question to, to customers um, about their gambling in the sense that, do you know how much you have deposited? Do you know how much you lost the last week? To be a very poignant one. It, it often tells us if the person has an awareness or not. And we do know that uh, a problem gambler would usually underestimate their spending. And that's why, and, and 
and, and another factor is obviously that our we run 24-7, 365 days a year. So we find it extremely important to have accessible and highly trained customer-facing personnel available in all modalities 24-7 as well. Because customers often come to us with problems or their significant um, others late at night or in the early morning hours. And that's when we need to be able to pick them up, be able to ask correct questions, depending on uh, the assessment of the customer and the customer's behavior and responses, we might suggest them to use certain tools uh, if they're not using them. Uh, but there are instances where we, we actually take the decision as well to freeze their account, even though they have not asked for that. But we feel that they, at, they may, may, at that particular stage, not be in a correct position to take a decision regarding their gambling. As well, something that we are very dedicated to um, is the support and debriefing of our staff following difficult customer cases. Because, I mean, there's no secret, uh, working in this industry, we do, we do sometimes face difficult situations with people who are in great distress or whose relatives and um, significant others are in great distress and where we try, obviously, to convince, especially significant others, to seek help so that they are empowered to be able to help their relative and, most importantly, get help for themselves as well. Um, and I think, yes, that's really what I had to add. Thank you. Okay.